everybody can see the screen, all right? Loan payment. This is the last section in personal finance unit. All right. <clears throat> so first, let's just talk about, okay, why we need to learn this? Because loan payment is closely related to your daily life, okay? For example, if you, you know, just like you go to college, right? You don't have enough money to get a higher education. So what would you do? You will borrow a loan, right? Or if you want to buy a car or later buy a house or apartment, whatever, condo, and then you don't have that much money and then you would like to get a loan or borrow money from some either bank or some kind of financial institution. So you use something or enjoy something, you know, when you are not, not able to afford it, right? So you borrow the money from someone and then of course you have to pay the price. So what the price you pay for? The interest, okay? Bank or financial institution, they will not just loan you money for free, right? Because time values. So that's why you pay them the interest, or in other words, they make money from you by making the interest. Okay, that is what we call time values. Okay, so in this section, we're going to see if we borrow money from bank and how much interest actually we pay them for the entire loan. Okay, and how much payment we need to pay back, okay, monthly or quarterly or determine the contract you signed with the loaner, all right? So very similar as compound interest or annuity, payment has its own formula, which is showing on the screen right now, okay? And then let me just explain the parameters, okay, what it means. So here, PMT stands for monthly, uh, payment, okay? It could be monthly, could be quarterly, could be yearly. It just depends the term. And a PV here, still, you know, PV is still present value, but in the loan payment setting, PV represent the loan amount, initial loan amount. That is the present value. All right, and an R is still the same, represent annual interest rate, it's a percent number. And an N represent payment frequency. Okay, if you make monthly payment and then N equals 12, okay, monthly payment. If you make quarterly payment and then N equals four, right? It's very similar as the K we use for annuity. And then when you, you know, make uh, annual payment, and then N equals one. Okay, so that's what N represent. And then the T still the same. That's represent the time in years. Okay, pretty similar. The, the name of the parameter is consistent with the compound interest. All right, so now let's look at an example. It says, you decide to finance a 12,000 car at 1.99% compounded monthly for four years. All right, that's the condition. And then the question asks you, what would your monthly payment be? What would your monthly payment be? That's the first question. And the second question asks you, how much interest would you pay over the life of the loan? Okay, two questions. First, ask your monthly payment for this loan. Second, ask you how much interest you pay for the loan. So that's the typical loan payment type of problem. And then we will use this formula, okay? 
So how we know it's a loan payment because the question is clearly stated that, right? What would your monthly payment be? That's why we determine that is the loan payment type of problem. So use this formula. And then we just need to identify those parameter values used in this formula, which is PV, R, T, and N. So what is the PV? That's the initial loan amount. So that does. Right, very good. That's 12,000, good job. 12,000, that's the loan amount, PV. What is the R? 1.99. Mm -hmm, right, 1.9%, which is we need to convert to a decimal number. That's 0 0.0199, okay, be careful. 0 0.0199. And then the T time, how many year we borrow this loan for? Three years. Four. Right, four year. Right, T equals a four. Very good. And then N, how we determine the N? Mm -hmm. 12. Mm -hmm. Right, N equals 12. Why? What keyword? Um, compounded monthly. Mm -hmm. Compound monthly, okay. Anywhere else? Monthly payments. That's right, monthly payment. Remember here, the N represent the frequency of the payment. Okay, it's represent the frequency of the payment. So that's why when we talk about the monthly payment, and then that's why N equals 12. All right. Everybody okay with the parameter values? How to identify it? Yes, ma'am. Okay, all right, great. Thank you so much for the feedback. All right, thank you, Tamara, for the feedback. All right, let's see. Now we need to plug in to the formula, okay? So numerator, PV, I plug in 12,000 times R, that's 0 0.0199 divided by N, which is 12. Okay, that's my new meter. Okay, denominator, I just automatically add a parenthesis. Okay, in case when you put in the calculator, you miss the parenthesis. That's the one minus inner parenthesis, one plus 0 0.0199 divided by 12, close inner parenthesis. And then raise to, okay, here not a multiply, okay, this is on exponents. Raise to negative n, which is 12 times t, which is four power. Okay. And then we need to put this formula into our calculator, okay? So now again, I have to switch. I have to switch you to desktop computer. Okay, just give me a second, it's coming. Are you guys able to see my calculator now? Yes. Okay, all right, thank you so much. All right, so now I'm gonna put a formula in, okay? If you have calculator with you, please, Follow, okay, you do your on your own calculator and then I do on my simulator. If you don't have a calculator, make sure you watch how I enter the formula in, all right? So first I enter the present value, 12,000. Multiply, okay, times, and then 0 0.0199 divided by 12. So you may wonder why I don't put a parenthesis around 0 0.0199 divided by 12, because numerator, they all have a multiply divide operation, okay, which is commutable. So it really doesn't matter. I put a parenthesis around 0 0.0199 divided by 12 or not, okay? The result will be the same. So that's why I did not put, okay? but. If you put a parenthesis around 0 0.0199 over 12, nothing wrong. You will get exactly the same result. 
Okay, just try to make sure you understand that. So that is my mu meter so far. Okay, that's the formula I put into the calculator. For, that's mu meter. Now I put a denominator in. Okay, divided by, and then parentheses. That's outer parentheses, right? One minus, and then inner parentheses. 0 0.0199 divided by 12, close the inner parentheses. Okay, now I need to put exponents in. Okay, and then I press the arrow key. So you see my cursor move to the upper right corner, which is the position for exponents. Okay, since my calculator already put the my cursor, you know, to the exponential position. So when I put the exponents negative 12 times four, actually I don't have to put a parenthesis around because this already enforced negative 12 times four is with the parenthesis. But if you use the TI-83 or TI-84 calculator without a plus, okay, not a plus, and then you don't have this feature. Okay, which is exponents will not move to the upper right corner. If that is the case, you have to put a parenthesis. Okay, so in order for those you know type of calculator, I just add a parenthesis, even though I don't have to here. So I press negative twelve. Okay, be careful. You need to press the negative sign, not the minus sign. Negative twelve times four, and then close the exponential processes here. Now my cursor is still in the exponential position. I need to bring it back to the normal position. So I need to press the arrow key to bring the cursor down. Okay, you will see the difference. Okay, you will see the change. Did you see that? Now the cursor back to the normal position and then I have to press a parenthesis to close the parenthesis here. On the denominator. Okay, so now I double check, okay, whether the formula I enter is correct or not. And then if everything is correct, I press enter. Oops, sorry, where I got it wrong. Oh, I'm sorry, I probably forget the parentheses. Okay, wait, 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 let me, I think somewhere I may miss the parentheses. Okay, let me do it again. 12,000 times 0 0.0199 divided by 12, and then divided by parentheses, one minus parentheses, one plus 0 0.0199 divided by 12, close inner parentheses, and then raise the power. Maybe I can put a parenthesis around. Let me just do this, no parenthesis, okay? But if you don't have this uh, cursor put on the upper top, you have to have a parenthesis, okay? And then close denominator parenthesis. Okay, <clears throat> now I got a correct answer. And then how to do the round it off, remember? We need to put a back door right behind the eight and then look at who is the back door, nine. Nine is the number greater than five. So we need to add a one, right? So the answer will be $260 and 29 cents. Okay, earlier here, let me just put an answer in. We have $260 and 29 cents. That's our answer, right? That's just the answer for answer first question. What will monthly payment be? So it will be $260, 29 cents. And how much interest would you pay over the life of the loan? How to do that? Any idea? Now we're working on the second question. Okay, how much interest would you pay? We every month pay this much, right? And then we need to pay this loan for four years. 
how much interest would you pay? So first we need to find out how much we actually paid, right? During this loan amount, uh, during this loan term. So we use $260.29. That's our monthly payment. We multiply by 12 because every year have 12 months. This is what? Yearly payment, is that right? And then yearly payment times four, that's full year payment, is that right? Okay, let's find that out. How much we actually paid in total for this loan? We use 260.29, okay? I won't switch, okay, because that's a simple multiply divide. You can do that on your calculator or on your phone. I times 12 and then times four, and then I get $12,493.92. Do you guys get the same result? Yes, ma'am. Okay, good, good, good job. Thank you so much for the feedback. So that is for four years, how much we total pay for this loan. And then remember how much we initially borrowed for this loan. Only 12,000, is that right? but we paid $12,493.92. And then that actual money, that is the interest we paid for this law. Does that make sense to you? So this is the interest we made, uh, we paid for this entire loan. Okay, let me repeat the logic here one more time. Using the first step result, okay, we got that's monthly payment. We use a monthly payment times 12 to find the yearly payment, and then times T, which is four in this case, that's the total payment in the entire four years, and then subtract the initial loan amount, anything extra, that's the interest we pay for this loan. Does that make sense to you?